And tonight, an urgent warning from the DEA about fentanyl, laced drugs on the streets of America. The truth is you can overdose from nearly every drug, meth, cocaine, heroin, you can even overdose from antidepressants. But for a while, heroin and prescription opioids were considered the most dangerous due to causing the most deaths. But now something else has taken that spot. Fentanyl is taking the opioid epidemic to a new level of urgency. It's important to note fentanyl can be mixed into any drug or pill. People need to know what fentanyl is. Fentanyl. 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 So what the fuck is fentanyl? And what are you supposed to do if you're around someone that's overdosing on it? These are two questions that I've been asking a lot recently. So in this video, we're gonna find those answers. All right, we are in Pasadena. It is a rainy day. We have Boaz here with us. <laughs> That's when you know I'm serious about something when I actually bring someone to film with me. Because today we are going to visit an organization called End Overdose, where they teach people how to use fentanyl testing strips to test your stuff to make sure there's no fentanyl in it, and how to use Narcan, which Narcan naloxone is what saves people from overdose, which I'm pretty sure everyone should know how to do these things, but I don't know about you, I've never been taught this. So I'm really excited to learn and also learn what the fuck is fentanyl? Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse Welcome to the end overdose offices. Let's go on a trip. I don't know how you talk on a camera all the time. Hey, Bravo. you save people for a living, so don't even. This whole, this is all going out today. So this is Holy 100. Is this like a, a regular day? Yeah, so this is 155 orders of Amazing. fentanyl test strips, Narcan. I just can't believe this is just like a, a regular day of orders. That makes me so happy to hear that people are actually ordering this stuff. Yeah, well, it's important. I mean, when you, yeah. It's the leading cause of death for 18 to 45 year olds. Like, is that is it the number one? Yeah. Once you've lost someone from overdose, and you learn about fentanyl test strips, naloxone, all you want is for everyone to have it. All you think about is, dude, what could have I done differently? What would like, if only someone had this, if only someone had this medicine in their hands, or if only someone knew about fentanyl test yeah. strips, like you would have saved a life, 100%. And we're actually going to learn how to use fentanyl testing strips and Narcan and Naloxone. But before that, I wanted to sit down with Theo and interview him, not only to find out what we can do to help the overdose and addiction crisis, but also hear his story as Theo is not only the CEO and founder of End Overdose, but also a full-time paramedic and he himself used to be addicted to opiates and fentanyl. Well, I'd love to start talking about your story. Let's start, how do you get into drugs? Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that's jumping right into yeah. it. I mean, this is actually the perfect setting because when I got into drugs, it started in Seattle, Washington. It kind of felt a little bit like this. And it was just real subtle, you know? I was just okay. introduced to it by a friend. How old are you? 13. 13, wow. For me, the initial reason was I just didn't want to feel the way that I felt at the time. But a friend that was already in their addiction at the same age um, had shown them to me and then I had What's a them? so like painkillers oxycontin so from Percocet. the get-go it was oxycontin? yeah during that time like in the early 2000s I had broken I had broken my leg and mm. basically what happened is I got prescribed like a bunch of oxycontin it was after I had that injury I'd been prescribed them I was hooked on them I went right into high school and I was ready I just wanted more and then it the availability was there I went to school in downtown Seattle and at that mm. time it was easier to get you know, a gram of heroin than it was to like get alcohol. I had been introduced to that lifestyle through pills and then I proliferated it with hardcore narcotics. Black tar heroin and fentanyl, all the good things. Intentionally doing fentanyl? Yeah. So started off with oxy and it was perpetuated because you got an injury in order mm -hmm. to prescribe it, which seems to be a really common story. One of the people that's on our board went after the uh, Sackler family and Purdue Pharma that Purdue, basically yeah. knew that they were getting people addicted to it. Long story short, Purdue Pharma was the maker behind the opioid OxyContin. And when they put out this highly addictive opioid, they told the public this. Less than 1% of patients taking opioids actually become addicted. Which was a lie that ended up being 
lethal. There's a difference between, you know, someone that uses like, you know, recreationally and there's a difference between an addict, right? And yeah. so like I fall into that addict type because mm. of the way that I use. It became compulsory. I don't yeah. Know how to say For example, the difference between like a hard user and an addict would be like a hard user would have something like they get in a car accident yeah. or they'd be at risk of losing their family and it would compel them enough to stop even if they were like impulsive or they had something gotcha, like that. Yeah. The addict doesn't. They can't. Well, they don't know that they can't. The Latin terminology and root phrasing for the word addict is enslavement. D is that really what it is? Mm -hmm. Holy crap. And it quickly becomes something that goes from, you know, you're using on the weekends to maybe you don't use every single day, but you wouldn't be able to stop even if you wanted to, to now you have a mental Blake spot. It's not even in your mind as a problem. Mm. It's just something you do. Your norm is completely changed. To feel normal, I have to use drugs. That's what I was learning, that it, it completely alters your brain chemistry. For sure. And what's dangerous about opioids, especially with fentanyl on the rise right now, yeah. is like your threshold for euphoria and your threshold for yeah. being like overdose are like right next to each other. Wait, holy shit, let's hear that again. Your threshold for euphoria and your threshold for yeah. being like overdose are like right next to each other. Uh, holy shit. Once you reach a certain point where your tolerance goes up to a certain point, like the, the, only th the only way for you to get higher is for you to overdose and die. And so that's why you don't see a ton of old fentanyl heads. You don't make it. So how long were you using for and then uh, where like did that flip? Six years. I mean, I, I wow. think it just is by circumstance, right? I think it was just a series of low points until finally I didn't have a relationship that I could hold on to any relationship none yeah, addicts like when they're using are very selfish people they're yeah. not trustworthy they lie you're not like a great person to be around and i'm not saying that like you know addicts are bad people i'm just saying as a result of being an addict part of that disease process is what it does to your mind and what it turns you into yeah. and that's why it's such an evil disease right because it takes someone that's amazing or that you love so much and it turns them into like a goblin <laughs> <laughs> you're like ah like i want to save this goblin but god damn it do i hate this fucking <laughs> goblin dude and like if your friends or family of an addict eventually you just get burnt the fuck out so for me what happened is i burnt all those bridges with the people that cared about me and i was alone and there is not a lot of feelings that i would say are worse than feeling totally isolated i had an experience where in that state I had a moment of clarity I could see that maybe I wouldn't overdose and die right away but I was certainly going to live this lifestyle for a very long time just had this moment of like oh this is gonna keep going right so yeah. that forever right like yeah. worse than death there's a stark difference between someone that uses drugs essentially because they like the way that it feels they may do it a little too much and that's yeah. someone that is an addict and like the problem that with addiction is that it, because of the what it does to you and how it makes you act, it's so hard to receive help because not only do you have to have this moment of clarity yeah. where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. Then you have to have some support system around you. So, yeah. Right? So like if you, if you just pissed off everybody that cares about you, who's gonna support you, right? You know, everybody that is struggling with addiction and everybody that is actually trying to do the right thing, you know, they just need a lot of love and a lot of support. Even the people that are just kind of trying to figure it out, you just need to keep them alive long enough until they get that chance. Damn, that was a powerful statement. So, you got clean. When did end overdose happen and why? Oh, great, great question. Right? <laughs> One, um, when I first got sober, I was madly in love with this woman. Did you meet her like at a sober? No, no, or? no. I had known her when I grew up in Seattle. Loved mm. her to death, right? Yeah. Like when you meet your person, you're like, that's the one, that was the one, right? Her name was Mara, she was awesome. One of us would yeah. be sober, one of us wouldn't be sober. I went to sober living. I was like, ah, you need to be, it was just a mess, right? And uh, I remember she sent me a Facebook message back in the day and it was, she just wanted to talk really bad. You know, I was trying to be sober at the time and I was like, I really, like my whole plan was like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna get the most sober I've ever been, like get a house out here and like bring her over. But I was like, I, I don't wanna talk to her yet because I'm afraid that if I talk to her, I'm gonna relapse. Oh. And then like a month later she died, right? And I got from a message, overdose? yep. I got a message from my friend Jade that said, hey, Mara died and it crushed me because I had, I had a ton of guilt. I was like, I killed her. Like if I was there, it wouldn't have happened. She was at home. 
she overdosed in the bathroom no one knew i think like when i when i heard that like i just fell apart right of course and yeah. so i i always from that moment on i just wanted to do something for others so like i worked in a treatment center but i didn't really do it i became a paramedic one of my friends who's on our board named ryan hampton uh gave me a narcan kit and he's like you should train people on how to use this you should make a non-profit i was just like yeah let's go like there are so many people that like have a common thread which is like they wish they could have done something right or they wish that someone had this thing that could have legitimately like saved the life yeah. right i mean at one point we were packing like a few hundred narcan kits in a garage but i mean really what happened is it started becoming more and more popular with the community that we're working with, which is 18 to 35 year olds. Our whole grow is, the goal is to make it as easy as possible to get. So right now you can do an online training. Basically you could go online, you could click a button, take a training, and then it would go to your house. Now we're doing fentanyl test strips and those work super well. We're giving out naloxone all over the country. We've given naloxone to everybody in like all 50 states. When you say giving states. out, that yeah. means people buy it from you guys, right? Well, no, or we don't sell it. So we uh. don't sell naloxone because that's fucked up. <laughs> That's what, when I found out that you normally have to pay for Narcan. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. It's like 40, 80 bucks. Uh, try over a hundred dollars. I mean, cool that you can get it at Walmart without a prescription, but still, what the fuck? Why Narcan and why fentanyl testing strips? Uh, well, I mean, it's the first phase of the problem, right? I mean, I think that one of the most painful experiences that anyone could have in their life is being in a situation where an overdose is happening around them. They don't know what that actually looks like. And then they don't have anything or they can't do anything to stop it. I didn't even think about that, not knowing if someone's overdosing. You may not even be someone that does drugs. You may just be like, nah, I don't do that. But like yeah. you have that one friend that does and they're not even a hardcore drug user. They're like, yeah. hey, we're gonna go do Molly or we're gonna go do ketamine, yeah. right? And they get like a little key bump and all of a sudden they're unconscious, pass out, snoring on the floor. And you're like, what is going on, yeah. right? So in that situation, um, what could happen is that person could die or you could just like test your drugs. And then on the flip side of that is just also having the naloxone present. So in case something happens, like whatever the case is, you have something that you can do to reverse it. So what is fentanyl? I mean, it was developed in the <laughs> 60s for cancer patients. Like the statistic that they you see drop a lot, right? Is like, that's a hundred times you know, more potent than morphine, right? Yeah, I saw a penny, the, the photo of like a penny and then the right. like crumb of fentanyl is lethal. It was developed by a doctor named Paul Jensen in the 60s and he developed it as a transdermal patch for cancer patients. Okay. And it was actually an awesome medicine. It still is an awesome medicine, but it's super addictive, right? That's why it's used for like cancer patients. What ends up happening is that if, you know, like if you're, if you're a drug dealer, you're thinking, all right, well, why would I, I would want to maximize yeah, that's what the I was, amount that I could sell, yeah. right? And like, you're gonna cut your supply and you're gonna take that gram of fentanyl and you're gonna turn it into fake heroin. Fentanyl, laced drugs on the streets of America. There are millions of these dangerous fake pills out there and they are killing thousands of Americans. But like the problem that you're having now is that like, or if you're getting different substances and you think that they're, you know, for example, MDMA or like ecstasy, and it's cut with fentanyl, the person that is creating that pill is not an FDA regulated agency. They're not in there like, oh yeah, it's exactly 0.1 microgram. They're like, yeah, yeah that looks about right. Yeah. And that's like how so many people have died, right? Like a big one was, and it still is, is like people buying Xanax illegally and they think that they're buying, you know, benzodiazepine, which is yeah. a different type of chemical. And they expect that they're just going to take this drug that they've taken before and it's going to produce yeah. this certain type of high and there's fentanyl in there and they overdose. It, it's extremely risky, especially in the current drug climate that we have today, to basically use without having naloxone or testing. A reality of, of many things that we do is dangerous. Same thing that you have like seatbelts in a car, right? You don't think about it, yeah. but like there was a time when they, they didn't have them and people were dying. Every time that you decide that you're gonna carry fentanyl test strips with you and learn how to use naloxone, even if you don't, you're not someone that uses, you're making that change. And that's why it's a community-based effort, right? Like we can say it to, like we're blue in the face, but what makes the biggest difference is the acceptance of the community. So every time that you yeah. decide to make that choice, you are at, it, it really matters. And then as for end overdose, what's the end goal? I mean, ideally it would just be to end an overdose.
And right now we're gonna learn a couple ways we can actually do that. Camera over there, camera over there, camera over here. Camera Great. Over this is the kind of a training that we would give to a large group of people to certify them on how to respond to opioid overdose. Go ahead, take a look at this. This is a pretty cool thing. Don't worry, no medication is going to come out. Oh, there. It's like, a you fake were... one, right? It literally just has something underneath it. That's it, right? This is what the... that's... actually it's like. That's actually what it's like. It's just like one. That's it. Once you press it in, it's one and done. And we're going to talk about all of that. And the training that we're going to use all this stuff for is going to give you the ability to identify someone in overdose yeah. and what to do to help revive them. However, our disclaimer that we also put here is that this isn't to substitute you calling 911, right? That's actually part of this process, yeah. right? The medication that we're giving you in these type of trainings is not like a permanent thing. It only lasts for like 30 to 90 minutes. So what'll happen is, it'll wear off and the person will go back into overdose. Hi, yeah, was anyone else under the impression that this was a permanent solution? Yeah, why isn't this common knowledge? I didn't know that, that's crazy. I know, Okay. but the important thing is, is that you're keeping the person alive so they can go to the hospital, so they even have a chance, yes. right? Because okay. if you don't do anything, they're dead. Usually in all these trainings, what we talk about is that the number one killer for 18 to 35 year olds is opioids. According to the CDC, fentanyl overdoses have killed more people since 2020 than COVID-19 car accidents and suicides. So, and there's like different variants of <laughs> variants. There's different strains uh, or whatever. Of strains. <laughs> uh, uh, what is that? Right. Of fentanyl, right? Analogs. An analog is a compound having a structure similar to that of another compound, but differing from it in respect to a certain component. In other words, same, same, but different. An analog of fentanyl would be carfentanil, right? Which is the one that's a hundred times more potent. Than regular fentanyl? Right. There's many different types of analogs. Basically, what people are trying to do is they're just trying to make it harder to test. They're trying to get around, make cooler new super yeah. drugs. And fentanyl test strips test for many analogs, but they're always making new ones. That's why when we talk about those, you always have to use caution. I was mm -hmm. researching fent fentanyl and that, was it the government claimed it as a, a weapon? I don't know about that. It well, could have been. fun fact. Fun. <laughs> Not so fun, fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah. I'll put the proper fact on the screen because I heard it somewhere and I know it's true. <clears throat> Told you, that says top military officials are potentially classifying fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction. What the literal fuck? Basically in an opioid overdose, what it does is it overwhelms certain functions, capabilities of the brain, right? Yeah. Especially those systems that are responsible for your ability to breathe, right? Take in oxygen, wakefulness. What happens is the brain gets flooded with all these extra molecules. They start going into places they don't belong. And what's happening is certain things start turning off. One of the first things is gonna be your wakefulness, right? So you might start feeling like the, oh, okay. the nod, right? Okay. Someone might start nodding off. Yeah. But what ends up happening is they cut off your ability to breathe, you suffocate and die. Sounds like Mean Girls. Where it's <laughs> is like it? Don't have sex or you will get pregnant and die. Did I just quote Mean Girls in the middle of learning how to save someone from an overdose? So Narcan and Naloxone are actually the same medicine. Narcan is just a brand name. That said, Naloxone, we have some different ways that we can administer it, right? So we're gonna show you two. So different ways to give it, but the way that Naloxone works is pretty cool. Think of it like a force field. Basically what happens is you've got these molecules, they're sitting in the chairs they don't belong, and Naloxone says, hey buddy, goes directly to them, knocks them off and kicks them into the ether, right? I'm imagining like old school gangsters, like, hey, this ain't your chair. Basically, naloxone acts as a force field. It sits in these receptor sites, keeping the opioid molecules off. But that's only gonna last for 30 to 90 minutes, which is why you still need to go to the hospital. How do you know if it's gonna be 30 or 90 minutes? I guess it you doesn't don't. matter. So you stay so. with the lower end. You should only expect 30, but it will probably last longer than that. Got it. But it isn't time range. It depends on the amount that they use, and those are things that you're not gonna know. So that's why it's important that you still call 911 and you send this person to the hospital. So Kami, what are some things that you think of when you think of opioid overdose? Like what comes into your mind? Passing out. Okay. Vomit, question mark? Okay. But what are they <laughs> I didn't even think about the fact that I probably couldn't fully address if someone's overdosing or not. Right? That's crazy. So it's something yeah. to talk about, right? Yeah. And in each one of the, our naloxone kits, what we do is we give you this flashcard. The three main features of an opiate o overdose is reduced level of consciousness, slow, shallow breathing, and pinpoint pupils, small and constricted. What this is called is the opioid overdose triad. If I Perfect. see that, yeah. they're probably an overdose. But there are more signs. One of the signs is cold 
blue or pale skin. You'll see it in the lips, you'll see it in the fingernails. The next one is pinpoint pupils, which we talked about, right? Yeah. This is something that you can check you by opening their eyeballs, taking your phone out, shining a light in their eyes to see if they react to it. They'll usually it. stay pinpoint. The next one is sweating, classic. But this person that's sweating, they're not really warm. They're like oh, cold, yeah. it feels like gross. Another sign is nodding off, right? This is one that we talked about prior. A lot of people end up dying as a result of them being nodding off. Everyone being like, oh, they're just, you know, they're just in the nod, not a big deal. Yeah. Leave them alone and then they die. Slowed heart rate, right? So if you were thinking, hey, I'm feeling someone's heart rate, you should feel a heart rate about once every second. Your ability to communicate, slurred, rest, speech, all those things. Float or stop breathing. So I like this meme. This is an old meme. See how his veins are engorged? Like when someone initially has trouble breathing or they stop breathing or they're suffocating, yeah. their face will turn like purple, face will turn red. Unconscious, unresponsive, this is a person you can't wake up. Got right? it, yeah. After you've identified all the signs and symptoms, then we go into our second step. And that's calling 911 yelling for help. So do you have your phone on you? I do. How easy is it it's to call 911? Oh, <laughs> nice. Calling 911, super easy. Take out your phone, put them on, get people coming, right? Because yeah. they're gonna take over, they're gonna help. Yelling for help is if you have Narcan on you, it's always better to have more people helping you than less. And the important thing for you to know is, have you ever heard of the Good Samaritan Law? I was just about to ask what happens if, yeah, no, I haven't. Every state has a Good Samaritan law. You can do a Google search and literally type in Good Samaritan law for my state. Does that person get in trouble? Like if they go to the hospital, they no. have drugs in their system? No, especially now. No, absolutely not. And the person right. that's calling 911, can they get in trouble? No. Nope, you're good. So we identified the signs and symptoms. We got 911 on the phone. Now we're gonna try and wake this person up. So show me how you're gonna wake them up. Normally you like shake them. Okay. And you're like, come on. That's it? <laughs> this per Kami, this person is not waking I mean, up. What are you gonna okay. do? So there's some couple ways that we can do this, right? We can use a sternal rub. Go ahead, take your hands, roll them into a fist. And then grind it against your chest. You grate against the rib cage, right? Like this. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try and stimulate this person, then we're gonna check for breathing. Mm -hmm. So you can feel for hot air by putting your fingers underneath their nose. Oh, smart. Okay. So tr go ahead, try that. And then the other one is if you don't mind, you're getting close to their mouth. Yep. And you're okay. looking for chest rise and fall. Now checking for a pulse, right? We have your carotid pulse, which is right in here. This is the one that you saw, so go ahead and find it. The other one radio pulse, right? So if you come down your thumb, you feel it right into here. This one's, I feel like, harder to find. It can be a little harder to find, right? After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna administer the naloxone. The first one we're gonna show you how to administer is the intranasal, and the next thing that we're gonna show you is how to do the intramuscular, okay. right? So intranasal, super easy. Basically, this Narcan is gonna come in a little pouch. You're gonna peel it open. You're gonna take the plunger. You're just gonna go insert into the nostril, but you're gonna place it about halfway in and depress the plunger, and that's it. It'll be a one-time use thing. So this thing mm -hmm. is only able to use once. That's it, done. You don't need to be breathing. It's absorbed into, through the tissue, goes into those, and then taken up into the blood. And it works about three to five minutes, which is really cool. How do you know it's working? Ah, we're gonna get into that. So cool. some of the things that you'll see, right, is you'll start to see a return to consciousness. Maybe the person gets up and says, hey. <laughs> Psych. I'm good, right? No, that wouldn't happen. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you get a really quick response. But you still should call 911, right? 100% because the okay. medicine's gonna wear off. Because what's gonna happen is they feel good now, they're alive, right? Yeah. But in 30 minutes, the medicine's gonna wear off, they're gonna go back into that state. So the last thing you wanna do okay. is let the person go off and go do their own thing. The other thing that you might notice is that the person feels really sick. And if a person's been using opioids for a long time, yeah. they're going to withdrawals. Yeah. But you're not dead. I would say dead feels probably a little more shitty. It's permanent, right? Yeah, it's permanent. <laughs> the other thing that you may have is that you may not get a response after your first dose. So you go okay. ahead and administer the next one. Right? So if you see no coming back to life, then another one. And then another one. It may not work, right? They may have taken so much of the medication, there's nothing that you can do, right? Uh, and so what we're gonna talk about is what really is effective which is rescue breathing. Even if you didn't have Narcan, you could still breathe for them and you would help them until wow, an ambulance okay. arrives. Hey, yo, did you hear that? Even if you don't have Narcan, you can keep someone alive until the paramedics arrive with rescue breathing. We always give out a CPR mask. I rip the band off. I just get rid of it, right? I was gonna say, cause like lifting a head. That's yeah, it's so kind of hard, steps. right? And all you need is this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the mask, you're gonna put it over the bridge in the nose, 
It's gonna cover the chin and the mouth. You're gonna take this hand and you're gonna pull the chin up to the mask and then you're just gonna form a seal, right? That's all you're doing, right? You're just making a seal, a circle with your fingers. And I'm gonna breathe into this thing. You may ask, well, how many times do I breathe for him, right? Oh, one breath every five seconds. How many times? One breath every five seconds. Man, one breath. Every five seconds. Hey. hey. <laughs> you're not trying to inflate him like a balloon. You're not like reaching on this thing like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. ah! All you're trying to do is just get enough oxygen in there the way, it, just a normal exhale. Got it. But so, what if you don't have this? Then you can... Go mouth to mouth. No, you gotta blow in her mouth, oh. come on! And so, basically, after you've given this naloxone, you go straight to rescue breathing. Immediately. That's it. And you rescue breathe until that person either elicits a change, like breathing again, they're okay, or until paramedics arrive. Hi, check-in point because this is a lot, I know. But we only have a little bit more to go, so I'm proud of you for watching this far. And now we're actually gonna learn how to distribute Narcan through a needle. Ugh. Because some states you can get intranasal, but some states you can only get the one as an injection. And bestie, trust me, I fucking hate needles and was really dreading learning this. <laughs> but once I learned it, I realized it's really not that bad. And if it's your only way of saving someone's life, you definitely wanna know how to do it. But I wanted to give you guys a needle warning up to this time. But now let's learn how to administer that naloxone. So instead of taking this out of the package and depressing the plunger, this one you have to do a little more work, but it's just as effective. All you're gonna do is you're gonna open the syringe packet. You're gonna get what is very scary looking, but really isn't, is a needle. And you're also gonna get the syringe. Easy. Have your medication vial, right? Now what you do is you just insert the needle right into the tip. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will try and draw it up this way. No, no, no. Mm. All you do is flip it over like this. And then all you do is pull back on this little plunger, right? We're just pulling back on this lever. So you do the whole bottle. Do the whole bottle. And all we're gonna do is press up and all the air came out. So it's a few more steps, but it's not really that crazy, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna find some meaty bits, right? You're gonna find a shoulder, right? You're gonna find a thigh. And now if you're wearing a t-shirt or something like this, you can inject through that, right? It's not the best way, but we can do it, right? Yep. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the needle and the syringe and like a dart, you're just going to insert it in, right? You how just got much a little do you have block. So you wanna insert, see how this needle is pretty Ooh, good size? I know everyone's thing. freaking out right now. Yeah, so if this is the top of his shoulder, in. <laughs> Scary, right? Obviously you're not gonna leave it in this person like this yes, for a long time, yep. right? You're not hurting the person, right? All you're doing is you're saving their life. And you just push down on this plunger, right? It injects the medicine. Then, oh, love you're that. safe. Done. The only difference between these two is that you have to do a little bit more work. But at the end of the day, this is an excellent way to save someone's life. And then if you ever need to review or you need to go back over, right, you have this how to use IM naloxone QR code that takes you to a two minute video on how to do it. It's also available on YouTube. We're gonna go into our final little bit, continuing care, right? You've administered the medicine, you've rescued brief for them, now this person is coming back, they're coming And you're away. waiting for the paramedics to arrive. They're coming back, we wanna put them on their side, right? The reason why we wanna put them on their side is because they may feel sick, they may vomit. The final things to consider, right, is that if someone overdoses, make sure they go to the hospital. I know that seems weird, but like, yeah. Uh, they come back for whatever reason they may want to use drugs again they may want to get high again because mm -hmm. they don't feel good anymore yeah discourage them from doing that naloxone doesn't have any life-threatening side effects allergic reaction it, it's very rare but that would be like any allergic reaction you still have 911 on the way and you're still gonna follow yeah. them up besides that if you're giving this to someone that's not overdosing they're just gonna be like hey man why'd you spray some stuff in my nose why'd you stab me and you're like bit. hey man I'm trying to save you. I right? thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. These medicines don't cause aggression, but if someone wakes up and starts to feel like and act aggressively towards you, uh, one of the things is always make sure to keep yourself safe. Oh man, this is um, a lot, but I'm so glad that it, it exists. This is a lot of material, right? Yeah. It's a lot to digest, right? But there's a lot to know and it's a lot bigger than me just giving you this and being like, hey, dude, if someone overdoses, just use it. Yeah. You kind of want to go through a process and yes. learn as much as you can. That's right? what I had no idea. I thought literally all you had to do is boom and you could jump, boom, and then like I saved a life. Because we understand that this is a lot of information, that's why in every Narcan kit, we give you all this material to review. Yeah. 
All the training videos that you do it, if you do it online, are accessible to you. So the next thing that we're gonna go over is fentanyl test strips. These thin strips of paper pack the power to test cocaine, meth, pills, and opiates for the deadly drug fentanyl. All the money that we use, that we get for these, yeah. we put back into purchasing naloxone. Got it. And then if you really need some and you can't afford them and you have to have them, yeah. dude, we'll totally give them to you for free. Then it's okay. just sending us an email. These test strips, you get five of them, real simple to use. Open the pouch and you're gonna get one of these guys. That is a fentanyl test strip. That's it, that's the guy. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your drug, you're gonna take a powder, whatever it is that you use, right? Okay. You're gonna take a little piece of it. You're gonna get a little bit of water, give it a is nice it, can swash. Can you just do like a, a little bit of the drug or? Yeah, you just put a little bit of the drug in there, just like, you know, like a key bump. Or if you would like to test a pill, just scrape some of it off, crush it and use what's left. And you're gonna put it into your water. Ideally, you wanna use 15 milliliters of water. You're like, how the hell do I measure yeah, that, right? It's like a shot glass, that. like a shot glass okay, of water, right? There we go. You just need some water and you put your drug in there, not a ton and you take this fentanyl test strip, see this little blue part right here? Where the little arrows are? So mm -hmm. you know. Make sure this blue part submerges in the water. And then you're gonna count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Right, and you're gonna take it out. See how it's getting kind of thick? It's starting to absorb the water, right? See how the water is coming up? And basically what's gonna happen is, see how the lines are already starting to form? So two lines, kind of like two thumbs up. It means you're good to go. No fentanyl is present in whatever substance you took. Now if one line shows up. It's so one thumb down. Hey, now you got fentanyl. So if there's fentanyl, it still would be this fast of like? Yep. Love that. So easy, like why not? Why, Why not? You? Why not get them? Yeah. And it's just such an easy way to prevent overdose because if you prevent the overdose from happening in the first place, you never need to use an Narcan. Boom. Is there a chance of getting a false negative? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you wanna do, right, whenever you use a fentanyl test strip is understand a couple of things, right? There are different ways they can make fentanyl and we don't know all the analogs. This test for a lot of them, test oh, for does. most of them. Wow. But when Whenever you use a substance, you want to be cognizant of the possibility of overdose and have Narcan present. Let's say that's a positive, right? And let's yeah. say you're a person, you're like, I don't care, it's a positive. I'm going to use this drug anyway. You need to start off real slow and you need to have someone that's ready to revive you or at least somebody that knows. Well, we now know how to test fentanyl. So now everyone will be testing their drugs and hopefully having this shit on them. And if you click this link, it'll take you to our website. Is that how and works? I see him do it. Isn't that how it works? If you click this, there will be a link in the description. Okay, well, thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. I don't know how to conclude this segment. <laughs> I did not expect to learn so much today and just be not only blown away by the information and wisdom, but the fact that this information is life-saving and it's not readily accessible. I am so thankful that End Overdose is an organization that's making sure this information is accessible, but I hope one day it is just everywhere. And if we learned anything today, fuck, test your drugs hit up and overdose and get some fentanyl testing strips. It's so worth it. I'm gonna, I'm planning to carry it around always in my purse, everywhere I go. Yo, that's so cool if you're at a party, you're like, hey, I got the fentanyl testing strips. And I wish I had Narcan back in the day. Like, maybe I would have had a couple less friends pass. Man, everyone should be carrying this stuff. Why wouldn't you? Ah, makes me so angry, but I'm just at least happy that we have it. And we shared this experience together <laughs> to learn this. So tell your friends to test their drugs. You test your drugs. I am so happy we did this. Test your drugs.